the Wormrest Temple undoubtedly still holds many secrets from the denizens of Azeroth. Lying underneath the base of the temple, a weird room of portals still exists. Supposedly, each of these portals should lead to the Dragonflight's nest of eggs. We know that most of the blue ones were probably wiped out, and we personally attacked the Obsidian Sanctum and destroyed the Black Dragonflight's eggs there. But the Ruby Sanctum was added pre-Cataclysm as a little preview to the next expansion. In this raid, you were supposed to stop the Twilight's Hammer from destroying Alex Trazza's eggs. It's kind of a weird raid, but we aren't here for a lore lesson, are we? Absolutely not. I'd love to do lore videos, but I'm nowhere near ready to take on a challenge like that. I'll leave that for people like Nobel, Bellular, or Platinum World of Warcraft. Platinum, by the way, is hilarious. What are we here for? Well, you're watching Game on Crafter videos, and in this video, we tackle the Ruby Sanctum. Was I able to break out of bounds? I mean, why else would the video, video be uh, so many minutes long? When I first looked at which area I wanted to explore next, I wanted to celebrate a little bit of the announcement for the new expansion. Now, the Ruby Sanctum is definitely not the most exciting raid in the world, and it's not the most popular, for sure. Be the Ruby Sanctum. The Ruby Sanctum is an interesting raid, because it never should have existed. But it's themed through Dragonflight, and it may hide some interesting discoveries out of bounds. So let's get right into it. First, we see that the area is completely surrounded by mountains. It almost looks like we're in a Corona, similar to Yellowstone, I mean... It was beautiful when I was there. Well, in many other instances with mountains, such as the End Time, Blizzard tends to neglect the fact that they would make Demon Hunters eight years after they made the raid. So they mistakenly made the mountains Demon Hunter vulnerable. As always, I'll be playing a Venthyr Demon Hunter, so let's see what damage we can do. In the case of the Ruby Sanctum, I did what every single professional explorer does. Click around randomly until I break through the invisible barrier. Eventually in the northeastern section, I was able to use Door of Shadows to get a bit of height on the mountain, and it also brought me past the invisible barrier. Well, you guys know what that means? It's time to explore! But before we can explore the Outerbounds area, I want to shout out everyone who has been supporting the channel. Obviously right now, this is a moneyless passion project that I've wanted to work on for years. It's the subscribers and other supporters that truly make me want to improve my channel and dedicate more time to it. So if you would like to join the support, you can subscribe to my channel and join the Uncrafters, or you can like the video and let me, as well as YouTube, know that you like the video. All support is greatly appreciated. We will get on to the major exploration soon. But I first want to show off the ring of gorgeous trees around the main raid. One of the most interesting parts of exploring the Autobahns area in the Ruby Sanctum is this weird lake. It's purely decorative and about as deep as the Xerath Mortis Lakes in the Shadowlands. Weirdly enough though, it's not on the dungeon map whatsoever. Otherwise you can get some really amazing views of the raid. But there wasn't anything else to see. Alright, let's move on with it. I tried a few ways up the mountains, but it's honestly a little bit more tricky than uh, other places I've explored. When I finally arrived on top of this mountain, I stopped and looked back, as I often do in these explorations, and just look at the amazing scenery. If nothing else in an exploration, almost every single Out of Bounds exploration is worth having views like this. It's beautiful. Let's see what lies beyond these mountains though. It's very different than let's say the opening of the dark portal where the outside land is just completely flat and there's nothing out there. No, this place has some depth and is basically multiple mountain ranges. It's pretty bizarre looking. Still beautiful though. When I arrived at one of the tallest peaks, I decided to pop a sea mist potion to see what I was really up against in this exploration. If you are not familiar with how I performed this glitch just now, I have a video on exactly how to perform the sea mist glitch. Click the card or link in the description to see how to do it. Now we can see that we are on a floating square, and uh, now we have some proof that the world truly is fl flat, I, I mean at least the raid is. But there's one thing really weird to look at here, this massive structure extending way far beneath the map. Why is it so long? We will get to th this discovery soon enough though. For now I will show off some incredible areas that I explored. When I arrived at this point in the south, the textures changed quite a bit and got a little bit crazy, including this giant square. I mean, this is massive. We're also going to get a glimpse at something relatively unique that I've seen in my explorations. There are massive canyons that could easily kill you all throughout the whole place. These appear from time to time in different explorations, but in this raid, they're just all over the place. It's really strange. Just seeing the sheer size of these pits are incredible. I wonder why they made all of this. I mean, like... 
yeah, most of these Out of Bounds areas are pretty flat or they go, you know, they, they extend mountains upwards, but rarely do they go super far deep into the earth. I'm sure it was likely just testing how the place would come together, but it's truly weird. Further to the west, I saw some textures that sort of looked like they belonged to the Ruby Sanctum, but they also looked quite alien. Maybe just seeing a large amount of this texture smashed together, it just looked weird. From then on, I moved further north, and the textures got absolutely bizarre. At the edge of the west, there's a spike wall, and then north of that, there are textures that I'm pretty sure do not show up in the Sanctum at all, or very sparingly if they do. But now, we arrive at the Great Divide. Look at this. It's one of the most broken areas I've seen in all of my explorations. Maybe the Dragonflights have some mysterious secret down here. When I arrived at this chasm, I had a dilemma. I wanted to cross this incredibly massive pit to get to the other side. For some reason, I could not use goblin gliders here, so I'd have to rely on my own flight skills. I decided to jump across, and I probably could have made it, but the way I attempted to jump was just not enough. I'm still not at the point where I'm super skilled to make crazy, vengeful retreat jumps, so I mean, I just wasn't able to do it I guess. I made it to this small little alcove though and sadly there's nowhere to go with this little alcove. You're pretty much stuck here if you're you're in this alcove. So I had only one choice. Leroy Jenkins! In my second exploration I headed all the way north and checked out this strip on the western side of the map. My favorite part was this view underneath the map. It's so bizarre compared to other areas that I've seen. I just had to pop another Seamus potion. And that's where we were. Otherwise, there are other texture changes on the edge of the map, but there's not really anything else here. Look at this though. We have a Death Star trench that runs towards the massive hole. It's very trippy. And we are back. I tried to get close to the edge without falling and failed miserably. Great. Well, to be honest, that's really about it. There's not an incredible amount of discoveries in this Autobahn's exploration, but the whole massive hole is quite bizarre. Thank you all for watching. If you stuck around this long, let me know your experience in the Ruby Dragon Shrine below in the comments.